Hello everyone and welcome to our second Tips and Tricks with NetBrain webinar. Today we'll be talking about network troubleshooting as a team and how you can resolve tickets faster by working collaboratively with your team in real time to troubleshoot issues on the network. First of all, what is Tips and Tricks with NetBrain? It's a program that we created and it's aimed at helping new and advanced NetBrain users with the help of our NetBrain experts. For just about 20 minutes, you can join NetBrain to see demos and information on extended and unique topics as well as common challenges. So let's get started. Today's agenda is, is short. Um, first of all, we're gonna cover what are the challenges today with troubleshooting as a team. Then we'll get into how NetBrain answers the challenges. Then we'll talk about how to revolutionize your team troubleshooting. And then I'll do a demo and show you how you and your team can troubleshoot tickets together in real time to solve issues faster. At the end, I'll give you some resources where you can learn more and try it for yourself. And then we can get to questions. Um, just a little bit about me. My name is Abby and I've been at NetBrain for about a year. I, my title is Product Evangelist. I'm a, I'm a strong believer in network automation. And prior to NetBrain, I was a, a network engineer for over 10 years. All right, so let's talk about the challenges with troubleshooting as a team. With COVID, and even before that, engineers are geographically dispersed. And so it's difficult to troubleshoot problems together. You can't, you're not next to each other in a cubicle, drawing on a whiteboard or looking over someone's shoulder. So it's hard to, to troubleshoot as a team. Secondly, it's very common to send any command output that might be interesting or screenshots by email or by chat, but that's not real time and it's really not so efficient. So we have to have a better way. Then once we um, troubleshoot, like the first level engineer troubleshoots and escalates it to the next level engineer or even another team, this process of handing off an escalation, it's, it's not so efficient because every time a new person gets involved in troubleshooting, they start the process all over again from the beginning. And lastly, um, there's a lack of visualization of the area in which the problem is occurring, if it's a particular site or, or whatever, because you, you may or may not have a visual diagram. A lot of times you don't. And even if you do, it's static and probably not up to date. So all of this leads to a very disorganized troubleshooting process and, and pretty chaotic. So NetBrain has provided a solution, um, incident-based collaboration, which can help tremendously with troubleshooting as a team. As you can see here in the image, you have a, a map of the problem area. It's a live map. Um, it's not a static map like a visual diagram, and it's interactive. You can zoom in. You can put data such as OSPF or BGP or any data really on top of the map, like by the devices and the interfaces so that you can visualize the network protocols and things like interface errors, et cetera, right here on the map. And what it does is it centralizes the troubleshooting for all people involved. It could be your network team, your firewall team, your cloud engineers, your server team, and you can chat right in here and share the troubleshooting findings such as your command output or whatever the case may be right here in this incident. And you can also view all of this even if you don't have a NetBrain account. So think of NetBrain as an as an interactive console for troubleshooting network issues. So this incident-based collaboration portal is revolutionary. It allows your engineers to be anywhere, doesn't matter where they're located at home or across, across the globe, but you can all troubleshoot network issues together. Then because you're sharing the findings, any key findings right here in the NetBrain incident, um, it's real time and you don't need this outside email with screenshots or chat messages or anything like that. 
um, the troubleshooting steps and results are these are automatically documented. So when you escalate a ticket, it's way more efficient because the next level engineer can review the results that the previous engineers had and then continue troubleshooting without starting it all over again. And I'll, I'll demo that in a second. Lastly, you get live visualization of the problem area. And it's an interactive map, as I mentioned, and you can overlay whatever network protocol data like OSPF, BGP, MPLS, etc., right into the relevant devices and interfaces. So this whole process, this framework, makes it way more efficient and effective to troubleshoot issues as a team. All right, so let's get into the demo. I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot a ticket with your with your team. So I'm going to show three people. First, the help desk engineer, which is going to check. He's going to check um, your CPU and memory utilization. Then I'm going to show that we get another engineer involved, a senior engineer checking BGP status. And lastly, I'm going to show you how um, one of your IT colleagues without a NetBrain account can still participate in the incident. So your entire IT team can actually troubleshoot a ticket together, which is very powerful. So let me log into NetBrain. All right, so first let's create a map of Ontario. We're just going to set up the problem. Then let's save the incident. I'm going to call it slowness at Toronto site. Let me save it. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So let's say I'm the help desk engineer right now, and I just want to do some basic troubleshooting. I can right click on the map choose overall health monitor and then say run it right now one time and right now NetBrain is logging in to these devices each of them on the map live and checking things like CPU memory utilization device interface status and as you can see everything is green you see that the interfaces are all up the devices and the interfaces are green, CPU and memory utilization look good. So as a help desk engineer, I can share this finding in the incident and say CPU and memory is good. Publish. So you can see that this note is published here in the incident for other engineers to see. Now let's say I don't know what to do anymore as the helpless engineer and I want to tag my colleague who's a little bit more senior than me and say can you help so then let me log into NetBrain as the senior engineer as you can see this little notification just popped up because I because the senior engineer was tagged so I click notification and then I open the incident. So remember, I'm, I'm logged in as a senior engineer now. So I can see the map of the area that has the problem, the Toronto site. I can see that my colleague has shared a note the help desk engineer has said the CPU and memory is good, but I don't have to trust if I don't want to. I can actually click on the result. And I can see for myself that everything is green. I can see exactly what they saw. Interfaces are up, CPU is good, memory is good, etc. So now I didn't have to start the troubleshooting process from the beginning. I can just review the results from the help desk engineer and I'll do my own troubleshooting. So let's say I wanted to check BGP on the router. So I can add an execute CLI commands node, get rid of the switches, add show BGP summary, 
and click Run. So NetBrain is going to log into the router and run this command for me. As you can see, this is the output down here. So let's say that I found this output interesting. I can copy it, do publish, and say all BGP neighbors are up because we can see the prefixes and hit publish. So this message will be published to the help desk engineer and whomever else is looking at this incident, they'll see this as well. So now let's say I want to involve an IT colleague that doesn't have NetBrain. I can just go and enable the incident portal, set an access code, copy this URL, and I'm going to open up a different browser that's not logged into NetBrain. Put the URL. And type in the access code. And as you can see, me as a non-NetBrain user is able to see the map. I'm able to see what the help desk engineer did. I'm able to see what the senior level engineer did. So, so to recap, all three of the IT team members are able to collaborate and troubleshoot the ticket together in real time. The help desk engineer, the senior engineer, and even an IT colleague without a NetBrain account. And by, by sharing the findings, these, you know, like CPU and memory and BGP, as a team, we're able to resolve issues faster as opposed to sending screenshots by email or chat and, and everything is disorganized, chaotic, and not in real time. So this is really powerful. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. All right, so that ends our demo. It was short and sweet, but we have some resources for you. I have a how-to video that was made by network engineers. This is the link here. I'm gonna paste this in the chat, but you can also use your phone and just take a, a picture or scan it and it will take you directly to the website. We also have Test Drive. Um, Test Drive is a free trial that we, we give you and it provides guidance. So if you wanna try this feature for yourself, the incident-based collaboration, you can go to netbrain.com slash test dash drive. And it was actually what I was using. I can show you. You can see that we have these guides here. This is the one with incident-based collaboration. We have a little video for you. And we also have the guide steps. Tells you what to do, shows you what to do. And you can click through and do this for yourself. And this is free. Let me go back to PowerPoint. All right, and then lastly, if you don't want to do it by yourself, but you want one of our NetBrain experts to help you, you can go here and request a demo and someone will get back to you. So I'll paste these links in the chat in a second. All right, so now it's time for questions. Um, we really hope you learned something new. Um, we want to help you troubleshoot issues faster, resolve them faster by collaborating and troubleshooting as a team. So if you have any questions, just type them in the chat and I'll try to answer them for you. Uh, yes, I have um, today. Today's session, um, the recording will be available um, to everyone. Yes.
Any other questions? Um, we also have one of our engineers here on the call, um, Raj, and he'll, he'll jump in to answer some of these questions for you guys. All right, so let's start with the first question. What platforms are supported? Uh, so if you're referring to uh, the platform that we're using for collaboration, uh, we've got the incident portal inside of NetBrain. However, we've also have, uh, we've had some customers using us as an integration piece with their Teams chat. So now we can integrate our incident portal with Microsoft Teams. Uh, so if you're chatting, if you already have a Teams group where you're trying to troubleshoot, you can always uh, tap into that group and pull that information into NetBrain. Now, if, if your question is more around what kind of devices are supported, uh, we have lots of uh, vendors that we support. Most of the major vendors out there, including Cisco, Juniper, Palo Alto, uh, SD-WAN, uh, VeloCloud, Webtela, ACI, um, and, and even public clouds, you know, AWS, uh, um, Azure, and, and GCP is coming out soon. So, yes, that's that's uh, the answer to the platforms question. And, of course, of course if I didn't answer your question, please, uh, if you can be more specific, I'll be able to tell you exactly what platforms you're referring to. How does NetBrain discover your devices? Very simple. So there's a discovery engine inside of NetBrain, which looks for essentially three things. Number one, your device needs to have an IP address. Uh, and then uh, NetBrain uses SNMP and SSH in order to uh, learn what vendor that device belongs to, and then pull its configuration and routing tables and some of the basic layer to layer three information to build those uh, dynamic maps that you saw in the demo today. But if it's a cloud element or if it's an ACI element, then we have API calls that we can make uh, to these platforms and then pull information from there. Can you show me how to create a map again? <clears throat> yes, yeah, so we, we can definitely send you over. Uh, I know we're running a little late, but we can definitely send you over the recording. Uh, but basically the, the way you create a map is just look for a device IP address, and you can, and, and, it, and when you search that in the search bar, you have a map option. You click on map, and boom, you've got a map right there. Um, so we'll be able to create that map like that. But again, we can send the recording with you so that you have um, the complete recording of that. And also, feel free to check other webinars and recordings and videos on, on our NetBrain website, so www.netbrain.com, and you'd be able to see a lot more, a lot more videos on creating maps and, and doing some of the basic documentation. So it looks like NetBrain has everything. Also is the deployment can be uh, on virtualization servers and how many servers need to set up. Okay, good question. Now this, this depends on how many devices you have because our customers range from, uh, let's say 50 network devices to 500,000 network devices, right? So depending on how big the customer is, we, we recommend um, the, the servers, yes, it can be virtual servers. We can we can install NetBrain on VMs. Uh, the most basic deployment is a two um, server deployment. You need a Windows machine to run that application, and uh, then you need a, a, a Linux machine to uh, run the database. So that is what is required for the most basic um, installation. And then based on how many devices you have and, and whether or not you need HA, we can always work with you. Uh, and, and of course, you know, recommend uh, the deployment. But again, any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to NetBrain and uh, via email, and we'll definitely be more than happy to set up a one-on-one -on -one session um, to walk you through the demo and, and all of the uh, deployment uh, options. All right, can groups be tagged rather than individuals? Also, can an email be generated when someone... Uh, okay, good, good question. This is something that we, we don't do today. Uh, we're not able to tag groups, but um, uh, our, our latest version is actually coming out in a, in a, in a couple of months. So uh, what I can do is I can always go back and check whether or not the groups can be tagged. 
if they can, then we'll we'll make a, we'll, we'll you, you'll see a new webinar uh, very soon with with all of the enhancements. So we'll definitely work on that. But currently, I'm I'm, I'm not aware of any uh, group tagging. How does your solution compare with tools like SolarWinds? All right, so um, good, very good question, and I, and I get this a lot. So NetWin is an automation platform. Now, even though we have um, the horsepower to do a lot of things that SolarWinds does, uh, I would say NetWin could do a lot of these things minus the fancy dashboards and pretty graphs, right? Because we, we never were in that domain. So NetBrain, uh, uh, you can treat NetBrain as your troubleshooting platform. So say, for example, SolarWinds or Ryan tells you that, hey, um, there's a, maybe they're a fire alarm, right? It tells you that, hey, there's a fire. But but the NetBrain is actually the fire engine is going to come and you know, help you identify where the fire come from and then help you fix it, right? So a lot of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, troubleshooting, like, like, for example, a, a very technical term, right? SolarWinds heavily depends on SNMP-based. Uh, uh, information and, and polling and whatnot. But the NetBrain is more hands-on. It's more CLI-based. SolarWinds could tell you that, hey, looks like something went down. And the NetBrain would tell you, okay, looks like the BGP peering session XYZ went down at this time. And then you can go in there and, and run some proactive monitoring inside of NetBrain just to make sure that your BGP sessions are always up. So it's a very detailed uh, uh, troubleshooting platform. Uh, very different. As a matter of fact, I would say more than 60% of our customers, of NetBrain customers, also have SolarWinds, uh, uh, and, and SolarWinds and NetBrain complement each other. Because SolarWinds is able to go trigger NetBrain, and the NetBrain is going to go uh, there and then use some automated diagnosis to find our problems. And, and, and you should actually subscribe to our uh, automation webinar, automation demos, and, and maybe ask, uh, reach out to NetBrain and ask for an automation demo, and we'd be more than happy to kind of show you how NetBrain works as a single panel class with all these other solutions. Okay, how do I reach out to you for deeper troubleshooting? Uh, Abigail, uh, is, is, there, is there a way they can, uh, is there like an email address they can reach out to for, uh, for maybe getting in touch with, uh, with a NetBrain account executive? Um, I did paste in the chat, uh, in the announcements, okay. uh, the link for scheduling a, um, a consultation with one of our NetBrain engineers. Oh. Super. Yes, so, so if you could click on the announcement section, uh, uh, the little uh, green exclamation mark, you'd be able to see uh, a request, a one-on-one -on -one demo, and then we can always give you a customized demo and really uh, see what is it that you need. Good, all right, so that's answered. Okay, so NetBrain has to have admin or at least read status. Yes, so you don't need to have admin privileges, right? You could just do a read only. Uh, and because all NetBrain cares about is is reading configuration and, and just show commands. Uh, so, yeah, you can you can give it like a show uh, level privilege, and then that's good enough. So read only. Is there any other class to explore NetBrain? So I'm assuming you're you're referring to um, uh, other webinars. Is, if, if that's the case, then. I would say check out our website and under the, 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 the recording section, you, you find a lot of these things. But uh, most importantly, I would say just just do, let's let's do a one on one. And then once we know what is it exactly you're looking for, maybe we can help you maybe find a few things in the NetBrain University if you're a current customer. And if you're not a customer, then then we can always guide you to the right webinar or do like live demos for you uh, and, and more customized for you. And we also have um, Test Drive, which is our free trial. It's actually unlimited. Um, and we have uh, guides in there that kind of tell you, like, for a particular use case, if you want to, for example, look at how to use this collaboration portal, it'll tell you step one, step two, step three, and show you how to do it. And you can do it for yourself in a live environment. Um, if you go to announcements, you'll see the link there for Test Drive. It's basically netbrain.com slash test dash drive. So that's an option too. Um, but you can always schedule the demo using that link in the announcement as well, where you can uh, work one-on-one -on -one with someone from NetBrain. Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Abigail. All right. Does NetBrain console get installed into our client's prem or cloud servers, or it should be a cloud service that one leverages? Okay. So NetBrain is an on-premise installation. Uh, but but this is how it's going to work. 
Now, if you have clients and, and if, maybe if, you, if you're a service provider and, and you want to discover clients network, you've got two options. You can either install NetBrain on your cloud or, or, or your premise and then VPN into your client's location to pull information from there. Uh, and, if, and if that is not an option, then you can install uh, a NetBrain front server, which is going to sit on your client's location and, and do all of the discovery and documentation and send the data back <clears throat> to your premise. Um, so yes, but, but NetBrain is not offered as a cloud serving from NetBrain, but then we have a lot of MSPs who install NetBrain on their cloud, and now they're, they're offering NetBrain as a cloud service to their customers. So both of these options are, are available. Yeah, and again, the best bet is to, to get in touch with one of our uh, account reps to, to really discuss a strategy. And, and if you have clients and if you're looking to, you know, uh, make money using NetBrain uh, with, 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 you know, by offering services, that's, that's a very good plan. We've got a lot of our customers do that. So we can definitely chat about that in more details. Do you have a good architecture diagram you can share? Uh, Hold on. So let's let's do this. Let me actually pull up a, a diagram. I know we're running uh, short on time, so let me do this. Let me answer the rest of the questions, and then I'll, I'll quickly uh, pull up the diagram here. All right. So would NetBrain require a user account to log into devices? Yes, it does. It could use the one that you already have, or you could create a service account for NetBrain to do that. But yes, we would need to log into devices in order to get to that point where we are pulling. You know, we are showing you all the config details. But then let's say you're not able to pull configs from devices and it's just SNMP based, then we'll just do a high level health check kind of a thing for you. You know, we can just map them out for you and then do like a, a SNMP based polling. But then the real essence of NetBrain is, is that detailed CLI based troubleshooting. So for that, we would need an account to log into devices. What is the database used? Uh, we use MongoDB in the back. And then that's then that's installed on a Linux server. <clears throat> Demo looks great. Do we have a trial uh, period? Um, so yes. the trial period is um yeah. is unlimited. We were gonna do a couple weeks, but because we keep adding guides in there for you guys, um, there's no actual time limit on it. So you can just go to the link in the announcements um, and sign up for test drive, and you get immediate access. And right now, we don't plan to have a particular time period for it. Great. Is the sensor requires less? So I'm, I'm assuming you're talking about uh, uh, industrial devices and sensors. Now, as long as there's an IP address in SNMP, we could scan and put them on the map. Uh, and that would require a license. But then let's say those are, if you want to treat your sensors as end systems, so you would still see them on the map, but as just maybe like a computer box, but but you would know that it's a sensor. But for even for that, we would need, you know, at least an IP address or a MAC address to be detected. So um, yes, in that case, you wouldn't need uh, licenses for the sensors. Now, in my experience, we haven't done much work in, in discovering sensors and putting them uh, or any other industrial devices, unless, you know, if it's, if it's really important um, and I know we, we all we have some manufacturing clients and, and sometimes in their warehouses we have to kind of go and, and put these things together uh, but then it's on, on it's on a one-on-one -on -one basis so feel free to reach out to netbrain like like uh, do a one-on-one -on -one session and we'll be able to kind of get more details about your sensors and then we can we can give a better answer there netbrain integrates with service now absolutely uh, we have a service now netbrain app that's available so if you're a service now user just go to your store Look for ServiceNow, uh, look for NetBrain, and then you, see, you can see an app over there. It comes with a bunch of documents, uh, uh, which talks about how their integration works. But essentially what's gonna happen is that when a ticket comes in in ServiceNow, it's automatically gonna go trigger NetBrain. NetBrain's gonna take that ticket and, and, then, and then automatically use some runbooks, create a map, and send that data back to your ServiceNow. So think of it, all of that uh, hard work of looking for devices, looking for fault, all of that is taken care of by NetBrain. And then NetBrain, your engineer can go in there and then and fix the problem. And, the, and we have a whole demo on that, by the way. So if you're interested to see a NetBrain service now demo, feel free, and, and we'll be able to help you out with that. All right, so, so what, what I'll do here is uh, I'm gonna just use so, so Abby, is, is it okay if I just share my screen? Um, yeah, go ahead. All right. 
submitting screen two. Uh oh, sorry about that. Okay, great. All right, so system specification. Someone had a question on, on can you explain how the architecture looks like? Uh, let me just do this real quick. So this is how the architecture looks like. This is the most basic architecture. Let me zoom out a little bit. There you go. So like I said, we have a uh, application server. We, we call it the, uh, this has to be a Windows server, okay, 2012 or above. And then we have a database server, which has to be a Linux server. Again, we, we support Red Hat and, and CentOS today. So um, that's the most basic. And this, this architecture can support up to a thousand nodes and a node is a network device. So it can support up to a thousand devices. But then if you have more than thousand, we'll just bump up uh, you know, the, 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 the hard disk and the memory space, and then we can support up to 2000. But then if it's above 2000, that's when you know, we get into distributed architecture. We'll need a, a few more servers. And, and then again, as this number keeps, as I said, we have a client who's, who, has, who has more than 200,000 devices deployed and under a single deployment. <laughs> for, for, so for them, we have a distributed architecture customized. So based on where you fall into this category, we, we definitely can support you. But, but, but essentially, this is what we need. We need a Windows and a Linux box. Does NetBrain work well with cloud computes like Azure? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, so NetBrain does support um, <clears throat> uh, AWS and Azure. In terms of services inside of it, I'd like to sit down and, and get more information on what is it exactly that you're trying to view inside of them. Uh, but from an infrastructure standpoint, we can definitely um, uh, support Azure and AWS. All right. Um, is there a URL to this document? Okay. Uh, there should be. Abigail, Ab Abigail, do you have an idea about um, if this is publicly available? I I think so. Let me let me actually take a quick look on the website and see if I find sure. it. Yeah. So, so while Abby is looking at the website, any other questions? I can I can take care of that. Yeah, but we have uh, uh, other demos such as you know the AWS uh, or the cloud demo. We have the the ServiceNow integration demo. And, and a few more other ones, uh, right? Uh, very focused on different uh, use cases. So, so I, I would definitely uh, recommend uh, check those out on our website. And if you can't find them, uh, feel free to reach out for a one-on-one -on -one session, and we'll be able to show you something. Um, I guess we're running short on time. I haven't been able to find it yet okay. um okay. so maybe we can wrap up um sure whoever, whomever asked that question maybe you can um reach out to one of your your netbrain contacts or or um go to the announcements and do schedule a demo and you can um uh talk one-on-one -on -one with one of our netbrain engineers and, and get some more information um yep. so if there's no more questions um anything from you raj or we should wrap up now now, the, the last thing, you know, if, if you have questions, if you're already a NetBrain customer, feel free to reach out to support at netbraintech.com. Uh, if you have any questions regarding, let's say, deployment, service now integration, and, and, and any services that you'd like to get from NetBrain, so feel free to do that. Uh, but again, like Abby mentioned, the best way is to get in touch with an account rep who can kind of walk you through all of this. Oh, last question. Uh, every node which is discovered by NetBrain will require a license, port, CPU, et cetera. Great, great question. So this is how it's going to work. Everything that has uh, um, an IP address. So let's say, for example, if you look at uh, switches, routers, uh, load balancers, firewalls, uh, access points, they require a node license. But then when we talk about ACI, for example, so in ACI, we go by the port. So if you see, uh, if you have four relief, uh, we, we charge per port. So it's going to be 48 ports times four, and then there's different... Uh, uh, way uh, licenses work there, and and CPU is only when you're discovering an ESXi. So if you have a vCenter environment, you want to discover the ESXi. We would just care about how many physical CPUs you have. We don't care about the virtual servers uh, and VMs. Um, 
I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I, in the, I found the link to um, that PDF that you have there, Raj. So I posted yes. it in the announcements. Um, okay. Basically, you just go to the NetBrain website, netbrain.com. You can go to support and documentation, and it's called system specification. But in any case, I posted the link there. Great. Thank you so much, Abigail. All right. Has NetBrain integrated RSA as a uh, device authentication method? I am not 100% sure about that. I would actually go, go back and, and have to check uh, with our external authentication methods. Um, yeah, um, I, I don't have that answer for you right now, but I'll definitely check that. And again, this is a very good question for support. So you can just, just email the support at netbrain.com and, and you'd be able to get a response from them. And if you don't get a response, you, you definitely get directed to, uh, if you're not a customer, you'll get directed to one of the account reps who can, can help you answer that question. Good. All right. This this is a great session. Thank you for all your questions. I know we are we're running uh, over time, and, and I apologize for that. But I think Abigail, that's that's all from my end. Yeah. Um. So thank every uh, thank you, Raj, first of all, for joining and helping with these questions. And I just want to say thank you to all our participants um, for making time for this. Um, every month we have a tips and tricks webinar, so there'll be another one in February. So look out for the emails from that and um, look forward to seeing you then again. So thank you, everyone, and have a great rest of your day. All right. Thanks, Abigail. Thanks, everyone. Take care, guys. Bye. Bye.